Hey guys, it's Danny. Long time no here, I guess. Yes, vacation is over and uh, it's time to get back to work. And I have to tell you guys, I don't know where to start. It's so weird to take a break from work or from your usual routine and then to get back into it. I absolutely don't know where to start. So today I'm gonna make a sort of updates <laughs> video type of video once again. While I was gone, quotation marks, a few stuff happened that I'd like to show you and just have a sort of journal entry for them. Some good stuff, some bad stuff you will see. But before that, uh, I'll take a minute or two to just show you a few pictures, talk a little bit about what I did. So feel free to skip a minute or two if you're not interested in that. But as I was saying, we didn't actually leave anywhere or at least go in a different town and stay at a hotel or something. We didn't do any of that. We stayed home, but we did drive around Cyprus, visited some things, pretty much taking a break from the routine. And it's a mess. The house is a mess right now I don't know how to feel about it but you know it was a good break so we visited the mountains which made me very very happy and I'll show you some pictures because I'm more of a mountain person than I am a sea person I like them both and I'm not a hiker but I like the view I feel there's more to see in the mountains not to mention it's a lot cooler there than it is here so we did visit a few uh, villages a few areas and they were just so incredibly lovely i took some beautiful pictures that you can see on the screen right now i think everybody knows cyprus because of the beautiful sea and the beaches but the villages in the mountain are just so beautiful so yeah there we have it pretty much every day we just drove around and it was a beautiful break vacation but now i really 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 want to get back to work i already started doing some things because I just couldn't and today I feel like I want to arrange the house a little bit because I just cannot let it be like that but I really wanted to film a video for you guys as well because I really miss it I miss making videos I miss tending for my orchids so let's begin so pretty much uh, I was here I already watered the orchids once so it wasn't like oh I was gone and nobody took care of them however though I didn't get to spend as much time with them and it shows so I'm gonna show you some bad stuff as well but first let's start with the good stuff everybody is hydrated and still alive and we do have some surprise flower spikes first of all on the angricum beachy i'll show you some footage from outside he has what i believe are two flower spikes which makes me so happy because last year he produced a keiki and I thought it was a flower spike, but nope, it was a keiki and I'm not sure how to feel about that. I'm more of a fan of flower spikes than keikis, but I do believe we do have two flower spikes on the Ingrecum right now, so he did really enjoy being outside. The orchids that are outside, they're all doing okay. As you can see, I've already moved some to the self-watering pots and it's so much better than only the semi-hydro because it doesn't really require me watering them all that much. And in the growth space, everything is pretty much how I left it. Uh, nothing weird happened, but I can easily go with the reservoirs for, mm, I would say a week and a half or so now in the summer, which is great. Of course, that for the tiny uh, masks, I cannot do that. I usually have to water within a week or so, but typically that's enough. Look at that pretty little root. So I'm pretty happy with how things go and I'm really, really thinking of switching everything, everything to self-watering because it's just so much easier for me. I also moved my Paphiopetalum collection into terrestrial mix and self-watering pots. It works really great since terrestrial mix is actually pretty weaking. And I do have a new addition to the collection. I showed you a picture in the community section. This is Paph. Delophyllum. This is a cross and again it's supposed to be a pink path. You might notice that I have a little bit of an issue with pink paths. I just want one. So this one is supposed to be pink and that one is supposed to be pink but just look at that foliage. And speaking about paths, I've decided that since they're doing okay and I like looking at them in the comfort of knowing that I am not killing them, I've decided to pipe down on the cool growers. Here are my Miltoniopsis and the only remaining Nelly Eiler. They're still here they're just struggling and there's more to summer than august september has 33 34 degrees celsius as well october is around 30 degrees celsius here so yeah summer is extended so i think i convinced myself right now that i did try pretty much the best setups for the cool growers but i just simply cannot compensate for this hot summer and until i get myself one of those cool walls you know that um, has water running all the time 
I will just pipe down on Miltoniopsis. Whoever uh, makes it, makes it. I'm not going to buy any more Nelly Eilers and Miltoniopsis. Try to focus on the model leaved Paphiopetalums because they're just so pretty. I used to think I could not grow them, but now they're doing so much better in the terrestrial mix. I'd rather have these than the Miltoniopsis. And yeah, well, I had to try it. I also noticed quite a few flower spikes forming on the Oncidium side of things, which are doing okay in the grow space not outside. I tried it with the Sherry Babies, uh, didn't really like it all that much. Uh, but I see that the Soto Anum has a flower spike and also the Cinnamon Twinkle, which is nice. I also have another Sherry Baby with a spike and a few other Oncidium intergenerics preparing flower spikes right now. Also some Miltonidiums or Miltonia, whatever they're called right now. I think we're getting into the season of Oncidiums as well. And although they're not the orchids that do the very, very best for me, they do okay once they get rooted, once they get adjusted. This is actually a Bellara we're looking at now, and here's a better look. You can see we have wrinkles in the pseudobulbs, but the new pseudobulbs actually look pretty okay, and she just started to produce a good root system. There we have another Bellara. Again, we have wrinkles, but you can see there are quite a few roots growing. This is how Oncidiums and Intergenerics do for me. At first, you know, there's nothing spectacular going on, they don't look the best, but then when they get adjusted, they tend to do okay. Bellaras, Oncidiums, um, Miltonidiums or Miltonia, not Miltoniopsis, Miltonias, they do okay for me. When it comes to Odontoglossum hybrids, or what used to be Odontoglossum, now everything is Oncidium, well, those are not doing all that well for me. And here's what I mean. I am missing the name of this orchid right now. I think it's a Wilsonara. I'll put it on the screen. This one is that really, really pretty tessellated flowered intergeneric. She's not doing all that great as you can see. All of the former Odontoglossum hybrids are not really doing okay in my climate and it's a lottery. Some of them pick up but it takes a while, some of them just don't and I'm really again seriously thinking to pipe down on these types and go more for the Miltonia side of things, the proper Oncidiums and Miltonias. But Ontoglossums, uh, they're not doing all that great for me. And if there's one thing I want to refocus myself now on is things that actually do work. Because having stuff like these that don't work just takes space, takes resources, and I cannot even do a, an informational or educational video on them because they just don't work for me. So yeah, I think I'll let other people more in the northern part of the world make videos on Odontoglossum orchids, I'm just going to stick with Moltonias and Oncidiums. Since I showed you the Paphiopetalum, I don't know if I told you I got him from Catacetum 2. I actually made a little order a couple of weeks ago to Catacetum 2. In the same order, I also got this particular one, which I didn't repot just yet. This is something that looks very much like the Bratonia or Miltasia, how it used to be called, shell up Tolkien, but it's not. It actually looks different and it came with flower spikes. I'm gonna leave a few buds open and then probably go ahead and repot it because I really wanted to show it to you guys. Look how pretty she is. She looks very, very good, so hopefully they will do okay. This particular orchid, Brassias and their hybrids, they also do okay for me. Once they get adjusted, of course, they're kind of like Bellaras for me. So I think I do have quite a few intergenerics of the Oncidium type to enjoy. I don't need to have all of them. Pretty bummed about the former Odontoglossum orchids because they used to do okay for me in my previous environment in Romania. Here, no, they just don't like it. They're cloud forest orchids actually, and I don't blame them. They like things a lot cooler than I can provide, so yeah. And a last thing that I wanted to show you, a little mishap with the Catacetum orchids, which by the way do okay in this climate, uh, but since I was not home to properly give time to them, Look at this, you know what this is? It's spider mite damage, but it's not the spider mite we all know and love. <laughs> we don't love it. It's not the false or red spider mite. It is actually the typical normal spider mite that creates webs. These guys were next to the window, all of my catacetums. And I think with the wind or something, some spider mites were brought over and most of my catacetums had some spider mite issues. Only this guy looks so bad, the other ones 
They look okay, I moved them here. So you can see they're not that bad, but they do have some damage. This guy on the other hand suffered a lot of damage and I'm giving you a close up so you can see. All of this was spider mite damage. Of course I treated it. Um, with the normal spider mite, it can sometimes suffice if you only shower the orchid, but I did do the oil treatment just to be sure. There we have it. This guy was full of spider webs and I decided no more catacetums near the window because through the window a lot of bugs can be brought over and that's just the nature of things. You cannot do anything about it. Um, but catacetums are really, really prone to having all sorts of pests because they don't have thick cuticles. Their leaves probably are yummy for pests. So now I'm thinking I'm just gonna place some cattleyas there. I don't know if you noticed, but cattleya orchids are not prone to many things. Yes, if the spider mites don't find anything yummier, they will go on the cattleyas as well. And I'm guessing mealybugs will do so as well. Scale and all that fun stuff. Stuff, but I think pests generally prefer other stuff to cattleya orchids. I don't know if it's a taste thing or the cuticle, but yeah, cattleyas, for me at least, they generally don't have issues. Which is good because I plan to put my cattleyas outside in the warm season. So yeah, there we have it. The catacetums are okay, they're just uh, looking pretty bad. Fear not though, the catacetums lose their leaves once a year, so we don't have to look at these things for years and years to come. Imagine though, if this was an oncidium, the damage will linger on for years. But with catacetums, it's no big deal. That's why I'm not even upset. I just treated them, moved them to the other side and put some not so yummy orchids in that corner and hey presto, problem solved. And there we have it. I'm sorry if this video was a bit all over the place. I just thought to give you a few updates that I noticed myself. But yeah, we're gonna get into regular video production very, very soon. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this weekend. Tell me in the comments below, how have you been? What's new with you? Any orchids you discovered that I should know about? Whatever you feel like saying, uh, yeah, just drop me a comment down below. I missed reading your comments. And I have an entire list on my phone of subjects for the next week so yeah we're gonna start with the subjects the serious ones pretty pretty soon so once again thank you for watching hope you're having a great summer still and you know the drill if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos tutorials q a's and random stuff of the sorts and if you like youtube to notify you whenever i upload a new video just turn on notifications for my channel and with that said i'll see you guys next time bye